Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Rockham Sakura. I thought today would be really fun. For those of you guys who might be new to the fandom, maybe started getting into Drag Race not 14 years ago. Maybe some of the stuff that Drag Race fans or people that you know that watch Drag Race or some things you might have read on a forum just go completely over your head. You just don't get it. The RuPaul's Drag Race Iceberg Explained by me, Rockham Sakura. Let's just put that out there. It's explained by me. For those of you guys who have never seen an Iceberg Explained video, basically what it is, is we're gonna be going through the RuPaul's Drag Race Iceberg and exploring the fandom. Not just what's on the surface, but what lies deep, 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 deep below the fandom surface that you may or may not get. Just a disclaimer, some of the stuff I might not talk about because it may or may not be triggering for me. Some of the stuff I might not talk about because it might be pretty controversial. And some of the stuff I might not talk about just because I don't want to talk about it. Because I think that just like the bottom of an iceberg, or maybe like the Titanic, that thing should sink and head to the bottom of the ocean. I didn't think the Titanic should have sank. That's not what I'm saying. I'm, just, I'm saying Hands that up. some stuff just needs to stay at the bottom of the ocean. I am not a drama channel. I'm not doing the iceberg explain to unravel any drama. I'm just here to explain everything. Anything that comes up in these videos, don't send people hate. Fuck you. Not Today Satan is Bianca Del Rio's, I would say, most iconic quote from RuPaul's Drag Race. It refers to her um, having a conversation with Courtney Act, Courtney Act throwing a little bit of shade, and Bianca retorts to the camera and goes, Not Today Satan, in reference to Courtney Act's outfit in which she looked like the devil. Ornesha! Oh, I love Ornesha. Okay, Ornesha. Ornesha was on my season too. Um, Ornesha is a reoccurring character in the RuPaul's Drag Race canon that simultaneously entered the workroom with Vivacious as a headpiece. Ornesha was a hit sensation among various fans and fandom groups and has thus returned on many, many instances on Drag Race. Also, Ornatias are sold by Vivacious if you want to get an Ornatia. <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah, you can get an Ornatia. <laughs> Miss Vanjie and Kit, wow, you must be really new if you don't get this one. Vanessa Vanjie Mateo's famous exit line during her first appearance on season 10 of RuPaul's Drag Race where she went home first. Vanji was devastated to go home and she really couldn't figure out what to say when she was leaving and all she could really think about was her name. So she iconically exited just saying her name. Miss Vanji became a hit sensation on so many social media networks, in the gay community, in bathhouses, and on the show was constantly being referenced by the queens and by RuPaul. Miss Vanji's catchphrase subsequently led her to being recast and brought back on season 11 of RuPaul's Drag Race. Lil Pound Cake is a character that was created in season five of RuPaul's Drag Race um, during the Little Miss Little Miss Beauty pageant that they held in the workroom for a mini challenge. Alaska Thunderfuck was paired with Lanasia Sparks and they came up with the character Little Pound Cake. Little Pound Cake was also brought back on the runway during Alaska's two-in-one runway on her season of All Stars. Sasha's rose petals refers to a moment in Drag Race history which solidified the top four lip sync for your life format that is currently in the RuPaul's Drag Race finale format. The moment refers to Sasha Velour lip syncing against Shea Coule, who by track records and by all means fans had speculated she was going to win the season. With the lip sync for the crown format, Sasha Velour did a wig reveal, which revealed to many, many rose petals coming out of her wig that became Drag Race history, became iconic, set the precedence for reveals and finale reveals during every finale, which kind of turned itself on its head later. And people were like, oh, we're tired of reveals. Let's draw more attention to the reveals. Let's take away the reveals. 
reveals during the finale are too obvious and since then has become a meta commentary in reveals itself. Which is very Sasha Valore, don't you think? Roxy's wig reveal is from a moment in season five when Roxy Andrews was in the bottom with Alyssa Edwards. They lip sync to Whip My Hair Back and Forth by Willow Smith. And I believe this is the first wig reveal ever in Drag Race history to happen during the lip sync. RuPaul has stated that it is their favorite lip sync out of any lip sync that she has ever seen. The moment during the lip sync saved Roxy Andrews and it saved Alyssa Edwards for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> and I really don't know why. <laughs> Shangela's Sugar Daddy monologue, in case you haven't heard, refers to Shangela's moment in season three. She had an untucked moment with Mimi I'm First. Mimi I'm First was given a critique on the runway that said that her look did not embody glamour, I believe, right? Mimi's having a fight with Shangela and then she says, boo, just because you have a sugar daddy that pays for everything for you, implying that Shangela has a sugar daddy. Now mind you, Shangela is not that type of girl. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Dela's self-elimination refers to Dela's run on All Stars 3 where she was considered a front runner for the first, I don't wanna say leg of the competition, but like body of the competition. For many, many episodes, Dela was either on top or had won the challenge and won her lip syncs for her life. She was getting visibly distraught by sending her fellow competitors home. Uh, during her lip sync for her legacy where she lip synced against Bibi Zahara Vinay, where she took off her wig and there was nothing underneath, <laughs> she won and the lip sync that she pulled to go home, which during the All Stars 3, 2, 3, and 4 format, you would have to lip sync, win, and choose for another one of your competitors to go home. Dela, instead of choosing any of the girls that she had all thought did a good job, um, on her team to go home, she chose to self-eliminate herself using whiteout that she found in the workroom to write her own name on a lip sync. From then on, I'm pretty sure whiteout was banned from the set. I guarantee you it was banned from the set. Also, no one from production knew that she did that. Okay, so Kennedy's death becomes her runway is a <laughs> reference to season seven of RuPaul's Drag Race where they did uh, Death Becomes Her Runway based on the movie. Everyone had to come up with a runway that was um, how their drag persona would die. So Kennedy is famous for this quote. What had happened was, Trade didn't like the session, so he had good in me and had thrown me in the fire. But I did not die. I had crystallized. And then Ginger Minge goes, so you had something already, you just had to come up with a story for it. And Kennedy goes, uh-huh. <laughs> season one filter refers to the filter that was used during season one that made everything look like it was covered in Vaseline. Season one filter is constantly being referenced on and off of the show as one of the weirdest things about season one. Is the season one ladder on there? Uh, it's not. It's not. I'm adding something to the iceberg. The season one ladder refers to a ladder that can be seen in the background of one of the, <laughs> one of the episodes during season one, which really just shows kind of how, how rough the production was during the first season. It's so funny. Six way lip sync on season 11 refers to RuPaul putting a whole entire team in the bottom for a lip sync. I'm pretty sure producers thought it was gonna be a really gag-worthy moment and kind of just turned into this whole flop of people flopping around on stage. No one. Also, knew. that gave birth to like the one scene where Honey jumps off the stage and she's like. <laughs> Party City refers to contestants on the show consistently referring to their drag as Party City whenever something comes off as too costumey. The Party City itself is a reference to season four when Fifi O'Hara 
had a fight with Sharon Needles. And basically what it turned into was Fifi O'Hara saying, go back to Party City where you belong. The Shade Tree refers to the Shade Tree, which was introduced in season eight and only in season eight. It was an opportunity for contestants to do confessionals at any time during the day whenever they're feeling anything. Although it was introduced during the season, only one person ever used it, and that was Kim Chi. Klarna. Klarna refers to a group of girls who were sponsored, I guess they were paid for a gig by Klarna to promote Klarna, which essentially is like a credit card or a way of racking up debt for people, but it also refers to Trixie Mattel and Katya during a uh, going Klarna. If I get any of these wrong, I hope they let me know. I hope they leave a comment down below and like this video. And remember to subscribe if they want more videos like this one. So if you don't know Santino and Merle, Santino Rice and Merle Ginsburg were both judges on RuPaul's Drag Race. Uh, Merle was on seasons one and two, and Santino's was on seasons one to six, as well as made a cameo appearance on season seven. Venus Delight appeared on an episode of My Strange Addiction, and I believe her addiction was getting plastic surgery to look more and more like Madonna. Uh, it wasn't about plastic surgery, but it was just her being Madonna. <laughs> it was just her like trying to be Madonna. Her addiction was being Madonna. That show is so heavily produced. It makes me, it makes me giggle. It's so stupid. Okay, so Manila's pad look refers to Manila being on her season of All Stars, which is All Stars season four. For the padded runway, Manila Luzon had brought a dress that was shaped as a menstrual pad. Manila didn't wear it on the runway. She later posted about the outfit and told the reasoning why she wasn't able to wear it, uh, but she still wanted to celebrate it. I don't know this one. Was Miss Cracker dancing on someone's car? I don't know. I feel like it's... <laughs> it sounds like a New York thing, right? Like Miss Cracker just dancing on someone's car. Rue knew Tyra Banks when she was filming America's Next Top Model, and Raja was a makeup artist on America's Top Model. So I'm pretty sure that Rue and Raja might have met before that, and that's how pe that's why people think she got casted on the show. I think she would have gone on anyway. Okay, I think that I'm pretty sure Asia O'Hara's Drag Race refers to um, Asia O'Hara. I think during her season, people like coined her as like the best successor for RuPaul because she like she kind of like took over the show during her season as like a like a mentor. Yuhua saying she was in a coma as a cover for filming refers to Yuha Hamasaki um, before season 10 came out. Contestants on Drag Race are not allowed to say that they're currently on Drag Race, that they're filming a TV show, that they meet RuPaul, all this other stuff. So usually what girls do is they either say that they're at summer camp, which is kind of an obvious reference to I'm at Drag Race, but I can't say it. But some of the explanations can be a little bit more drastic. Yuwa Hamasaki, for example, on her season, said she was in a coma the whole time they were filming. Oh, didn't Katya? I'm pretty sure that refers to like an actual thing. Katya gave Trixie a doll. That's scary. Like a haunted doll. I'm sure it was like a Barbie or something. All you uh fan in the in the in the comments, explain that one for me. Okay, you guys, that was some of the RuPaul's Drag Race iceberg explained. We didn't do everything because goddamn, some of that stuff is just like, I don't wanna talk about it. You can just look it up yourself. Why even make this video? Cause it's funny to hear me talk about it. That's why. If you like this video or you have any answers to some of the iceberg questions that I couldn't answer or I got wrong myself, please leave a comment down below. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, ring the bell for notifications if you want more content just like this. And of course, if you want more content like this, please make sure to subscribe to us on Patreon, support us, it helps, helps me feed my kids. Adam and Cash. <laughs> <laughs> because they're hungry and they can't just keep sucking. No. No. <laughs> please consider joining Patreon because maybe we can hire a new joke writer. <laughs> 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 Anyways, with that, we'll say, talk to you later. Bye, next iceberg. Google Maps. Hey, squirrel friends. When one video ends, just open up another one. It's called binge viewing.
Go ahead. I support you. Did they click another video yet?